When you examine the things that the left is after, it seems so chaotic. It's chaotic, and it's weird to me because of how, how quickly it all transpired. It's really weird. Um, like when I was in college, we, we just had bathroom signs. I never thought that this would be a fight that the left would take on. Well, what if I'm not a he or a she and I'm an it? I need to know that all people can go into this bathroom. You know, what if I'm a Z, a Zer, you know, 26,000 pronouns. It just wasn't like this a short time ago. Things have gotten frantic and you look up and you say, why? Who was the person that really got this upset about a bathroom sign? That they decided to take this to DC and start marches. What, what was that? You can't, are we that privileged? Do we need to all go to a third world country? Do we need to all go visit a continent like Africa and understand what it really means to want? Are we bored? Are we suffering from privilege? I think the answer is yes. Do you know how privilege, go speak to an African, for those of you who have visited the continent like I have, and try to explain to them that Americans are upset about bathroom signs. They will laugh in your face, meaningfully laugh in your face. If you saw my colleague, Matt Walsh's um, documentary, What is a Woman? He did that. He went to an African tribe and he tried to explain to them that he, as a man, was actually a woman on the inside. And they laughed, a roarous, happy, fulfilled laugh in his face, right? Because it was very simple to them to understand these things. You have to be privileged to come up with these. You have to privilege to come up with these problems, bored out of your mind to care about something that is so stupid in the web of our lives. So you've got this weird platform and you go, what is that about? And then it's confusing because at the same time that they're telling women to act like men, go to work. You can be bad all by yourself. All my single ladies, right? You don't need a man, men ain't shit, right? That's gotten very popular, that phrase, this whole thing. At the same time that they're telling women that they can do everything by themselves, and women are miserable because of it, um, they're telling men to act like women, right? Whoa, what are you doing there? Are you being a man? Well, that's toxic masculinity, what you're doing there. That's got a name now, toxic masculinity, showing signs of aggression. S soon enough, you guys will all be old enough uh, you'll start your own families. I have a boy, I have a girl, and I have another boy coming. And let me tell you, that toxic masculinity, it starts at about nine months, as soon as they start walking, okay? My son wakes up every day and he wants to fight me, okay? He wants to literally fight me. He's aggressive, he wants to punch, he wants to kick. You take him out, it's like he just is ready for the Spartan Wars, the Peloponnesian Wars to take place all day, doesn't stop. His way of showing affection is to come up and punch a leg. Why? I'm saying, I say, mommy doesn't want to fight you. Go find your daddy, okay? And his, he goes and he finds his dad. And he, they fight. They wrestle. They get thrown around. It's, he's just a boy, okay? There's nothing toxic about it. He's a boy. My girl, oh, my sweet girl. She came along second. She wants to listen to Disney princess songs. She loves it. She sings the songs. She wants to sit down. She's dainty. It's so nice because I, I can't keep getting punched in the stomach by my two-year-old son. So right now we're battle between the sexes in our house. Men and women, male and female, we come out differently. Our wants are different. Even the way that we deal with one another, women, right? My husband just thinks it's amazing when I sit down with girls and all we do is talk about the most ridiculous gossip and things. We just say so many words. And if you actually look, girls start speaking before boys. My daughter started speaking at one. My son started speaking at two. We speak way more words than men do. It's natural, this is, a, this is biological. This is how we come together. We talk, we share information. Men don't do that, men compete. Let's watch the game, right? <laughs> Let's, competition is, is so embedded into their character that when men come together, they're not sitting around talking about details of, oh, when is, when is your wife due? What are you gonna name your kid? My husband will come back from dinner with one of his guy friends and he'll be like, oh, they're having a second kid. I'm like, boy or girl? He's like, I didn't ask. I'm like, you weren't interested? <laughs> you didn't ask any more details? It's shocking. We are just so different. So it's weird that we're trying to pervert it and trying to encourage women to act like men while telling men to act like women. And you look up and you ask yourself, why? What's the purpose of that? What's the purpose of pushing this, this trans agenda? 
right? That didn't exist. I didn't graduate with a single trans person from high school. So you have to either believe that really deep down everyone was trans and suffering, which if they were, they would have come out now. I'm still friends with these people on Facebook. Or you understand that ideas can be implanted into your head, into your mind. When things become an option, they pursue these options. Go try to find a trans person in Uganda. Go try to find one. If it's just natural and it's what people are doing. So what's the purpose of these ideas? 